we're going to talk about how lighting is not just a visual tool to show form. It's a way to establish a mood. If I was out to dinner with Michael, the mood would be very romantic. You can completely refocus your lighting and make them look really scary and suspenseful and eerie. Somebody should, in theory, be able to look at your painting and understand where the light is coming from. Lighting is really what makes it possible to really see form. Lighting is really good for anatomy. That's sternocleidomastoid. Oh, he has such a nice sternocleidomastoid. If you don't have a lot of experience with lighting, stick to one light source. It's a lot more consistent. Here's an example of multiple light sources on a single form. You don't really know where the light is coming from. It's like on one hand, well, maybe it's on the right, maybe it's on the left. And so what they end up doing is creating a really confusing lighting situation. Two light sources can work. So we have a really abrupt, bold highlight on the left-hand side, a soft highlight coming in on the right-hand side. Because the two highlights are so different, they're a lot easier to distinguish. One of the reasons the two sources of light really work well is it's a really well-defined shadow core down the middle of the face. It's substantial enough and it's dark enough that you can actually get away with that. Whether or not you choose to show the light source, sometimes it tells something about the story. This is Magneto when he was young and hot. He's in Professor Xavier's library and they're talking about right and wrong. Where's the light coming from? Is it coming from a lamp? Is it coming from a window? Here we have this light that's like streaming outside of this window. You see this beautiful lighting situation. Oh, just look at that arm. That arm is really great. Somebody totally stole this from Calling of St. Matthew. You can actually see the head of Christ and he's like pointing his hand forward. The lighting is definitely really showing the direction of Christ because Christ is pointing this way. If you have lighting from above, people's eye sockets get really dark, like raccoon eyes. If you have lighting from below, when they're trying to create a feeling that's a little bit more eerie. If you put the lighting behind the figure and then you make the face all in shadow, it becomes a very beautiful profile. In a subway car, usually you have fluorescent lights, very sterile. It's a very cold light as well. So usually it's a little bit bluish. His cheekbones are just not very pronounced. Fluorescent light, not where you want to go if you want to accentuate forms on the face. Bright, middle of the day, direct sunlight, you're going to get super high contrast. The cloudy day, the softness of the light, it gets very diffuse and you lose all those harsh shadows. The contrast is very low. You can also get indoor light, which is like a spotlight, very theatrical really harsh, hyper dramatic lighting. You've got direct light, you have the shadow core and the reflected light. The two that you're going to see the most visibly are the direct light and the shadow core. Reflected light, super, super subtle. A lot of people have trouble seeing it. Direct light, I think, is the easiest one to spot. It's usually very high in contrast. Young, hot Magneto is mostly in shadow, but just like a little rim of highlight. The shadow core is the darkest part of the shadow, usually right up against the direct light. Direct light on this side, shadow core in the middle, right side of this slide. That is the reflected light. Light's coming from here, hits the floor, and it bounces back. If you're not looking for it, you're not going to find it. It's going to profoundly change the volume and form in your paintings. Cast shadows, I think, really trip people up. Very flat, very crisp edge, very graphic. Sometimes the cast shadows are not that well defined. It depends on the location of the object that's making the cast shadow to the surface, Michael's pectoralis major. You have direct light on the right hand side of the torso, but then you have this cast shadow from the window pane. The cast shadow, it's got this wave to it. This cast shadow from the hat is following the form on Michael's cheekbones, <laughs> okay. 
cast shadows really relevant in painting. I think the person that really is excellent to look at for cast shadows because he is so simple about it would be Edward Hopper. There are cast shadows all over this. There's a cast shadow at the top that the window is making onto the wall, but then the figure is creating a cast shadow that's falling across the bed. Here are the form shadows. <laughs> There's a lot of them. If you look at the form shadows, very soft edges versus the cast shadows, which just cut across the forms. We have direct light, shadow core, reflected light, form shadow, cast shadows. Artificial light usually has like a warmth to it, usually has warm yellowish highlights, and the shadows will be very cool, purpley, bluish types of tones. Let's look at Andrew Zorn, artificial light. This whole section of her face is all yellow because of the indoor lighting. Cool colors on that little patch of reflected light. It's like a really subtle grayish lavender. In natural light, the highlights are going to be cool and frosty. You have to take lighting into your own hands. Create your own lighting situation. You want to control the direction of the light. The position of the light is the lighting behind the figure. 